and welcome back yes now today we're going to be talking about error condition reporting and monitoring and basically just detecting really yeah I've for the last month or six weeks or more now I've been trying to rack my brains how we can detect when an error condition arises in an Arduino or other microcontroller project and uh, you know, your projects up in a corner somewhere or locked away and something goes wrong and it doesn't recover from that and it's just sitting there even if it does recover you're not aware that an error happened um, and that's really not good enough so I've been putting my brain cells to some use and yes I know it took a while as you can imagine um, they do move extremely slowly but I have got some ideas so let's let's explore that after this message from our wonderful sponsor I want to do a quick shout out to PCB way PCB prototype the easy way now specifically I want to have you look at that thing at the top that says price reduced for the four and six layer PCBs that is an offer you don't want to miss and remember that PCB way has now got a massive range of services just right for prototyping and small business runs let's have a look PCB way can do prototype PCB assembly up to 20 pieces for just $30 now that is an offer you might want to explore as well especially small businesses and don't struggle with all those little tiny SMT components. Get PCB Way to do it for you. Look, if you choose the assembly, you get free shipping. It virtually pays for itself, doesn't it? And as an added incentive, just to try out the services, if you've got a small production run, prototyping run, something like that, if you have spend over $40 on the product, you can get $10 off, like this. Now here's how to claim your $10. Just go to your My Coupons tab on your page, your account page, um, add in PCBWay8.RSB on your redeem coupons. Click it and you've got three months in which to save you $10. That's a pretty good offer. Go and use it. Don't lose it. PCB Way Worth trying out. So I've been thinking about what other mechanisms there are out there already um, in the real world. That is to say, look, something's gone wrong with this device. You need to fix it or, or perhaps put some corrective measure in. Yeah, for example, think of your router or your broadband router modem whatever it is yeah it comes in and the lights come on and when those lights either go off or start flashing it means there's something wrong and you can detect that and you can think oh i haven't got three steady lights or no lights i've got this flashing red one and that means something's gone wrong fine you, you've been made aware of it and you can do something about it but if you remember the first thing that went wrong last for me was this device here <clears throat> my um bin collection reminder because it um, wouldn't read for some reason the little fs partition of course since then it's been it's been working really well Shh. i'm not saying too much in case it can hear me but yeah it's been working really well and the problem with this is that on the bottom of this screen all i put was something went wrong basically my fault total sloppy coding thinking well i don't know i was just lazy basically i should have written something on this screen because this is a sort of an odd case in as much that anything written on that screen stays on that screen even when the power goes off and it will stay on that screen literally for years so i should have written something on that screen and i still haven't put the code in to do that so if it does go wrong again ah, i'm back to the old position of thinking right something's gone wrong but i don't know what it is now that also applies to say something like like this right this is one of my temperature monitoring things it's um just gone off you know oh that's got a dodgy cable somewhere um now this is going to go up in my attic it reports the temperature there but if that goes wrong as the prototype did occasionally when it couldn't connect to the wi-fi um i wouldn't know what's happened and you go up there and you think well why aren't you working and the only way to find out really is to connect the serial monitor up and reboot it and see what was wrong the problem with that approach is that the problem could then go away as it did with that um, garbage bin reminder if i press reset it all suddenly worked again so the the error has now been deleted if you like and you can't work out what's happened now on this particular device if you notice i've got one led here um, that tells me a little bit about what's going on green means yes i'm transmitting quite happily to the master controller unit on my wall here in my workshop right so watch what happens when i power up that um monitoring device here so it's off at the minute now it's gone red to say uh -uh, i haven't transmitted anything it's not right 
But if we just wait for a few seconds, look, it blinked and then it's gone green to say everything's okay. Now, that device, if it cannot transmit the temperature using ESP now, yeah, I did a video, that, that video up there, I did that on ESP now. Great, you really should use it. Um, then it will go back to red. So at least if it's sitting there in the attic not transmitting, and I look at the web page that reports all these temperatures and it goes, I haven't heard from the attic for ages. At least I can go up there and have a quick look and that will be red and not green. And I know that's what the problem is. Which is okay. You know, it's, it's better than nothing, admittedly. But mm, not quite the full answer. Now, the, the work I've been looking at um, was brought about well i've got some notes here like in fact i'm gonna i might put this on my github i don't know all the different notes i've had about what we can do and how we can report things because the thing that brought this to mind to me if you remember i'm getting a new computer it's being delivered today yay anyway calm down motherboards some of them have a dual seven segment led like some of these except none of these are dual they're rather quads or triples or singles but anyway a lot of them have two leds like this seven segment smaller than this admittedly and that gives you the current status so it might start off at zero zero and go a4 a9 b6 whatever and it tells you each stage of the motherboard booting process because if you haven't got a graphic output at that point you're stuck aren't you, you think i don't know what's wrong with the motherboard now if you remember Years ago, back in the 80s and 90s, we had something called BIOS beep codes. And uh, if you didn't plug in your stuff right on the motherboard then, um, you might have a beep that's like three small beeps and a long beep. Yeah, so beep, 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 beep. That might mean on some motherboards, your RAM's not connected. And lo and behold, you find you haven't pushed it down properly, hasn't clicked in. Great, so that's all right, and it works okay for about, you know, three to four beeps. After that, you think, hang on, was that six or seven? I've lost count now. Uh, but that's one of the options we have to us in our Arduino world. So instead of having just a, a simple little device like this that has only two colours on it, what it would actually do is flash a certain number of times. It might flash three quick flashes and then a long flash and then a big pause so you can work out what's a flash and what's the actual error so flash 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 long flash you think what 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 did i put that into my program for and you'd have a look on your little crib sheet and you go ah can't connect to wi-fi for example and that is pretty easy to do because all you've got to do is write one module that accepts an incoming value, doesn't matter what the value is, you know, one to a million, and translates that into a number of flashes. So your your bit of code that says, right, I'm gonna have one as one as this particular flash sequence, two is this, three is that, and so on, is entirely up to you. You just make sure you write them down on a list and keep them with the actual module itself, otherwise you'll never be able to decipher it. But at least there's a way of doing it, and you'll think, why is this not working this this b counter and you go up to it and you see it see it going flash flash long flash long flash you think ah what's that mean i've lost a bit of paper. no no you found the bit of paper and you can work out what the actual error code is telling you without having to connect up a serial monitor hmm okay well that's that's certainly an option and something i might be exploring just because it's easy and it's cheap and that only works, of course, for things that are powered continually. The other thing about that mechanism, in fact, any mechanism reporting errors, does the Arduino carry on? Does it try and reboot itself, for example, and have another go? Um, some of my devices here, if they can't connect to the Wi-Fi five times on a row, I think, it reboots the entire device. And a reboot is not quite like a power on, because you're not powering on all the individual bits of this board or whatever PCB it is you've designed. But it's it's better than nothing. The other way, of course, is to reset the Arduino and any other components by using an external uh, watchdog, which I also did a video about, yes. And that works very well. It powers everything down and then switches everything back on again. And your Arduino keeps pulsing out on a particular pin saying, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, and keeps everything powered up. That's that's a good way of recessing the Arduino back to a cold known state. 
Um, yeah, so when the, when this goes wrong, I don't know if you notice it blinking there, obviously sent out another to my little thing down there, a controller, workshop controller, heater thing, and it's going, yeah, I've sent it. It says I've received it. Green it is. Great. Um, the other thing about um, all this occurs, though, if it did go wrong, say that went wrong and it went red. So we now have a, I couldn't transmit. It did not work. The controller didn't receive it, didn't acknowledge it. And you might have tried it three times already within your code, just be absolutely sure. But now this is red. What do you do? Do you say to the actual microcontroller, OK, we're going to reset and try again. But that means you're going to lose this information that it's gone wrong and you'll live in well blissful ignorance really that it's going wrong quite often but you're not aware of it and maybe if you were to fix it it wouldn't go wrong at all i know it's it's a minefield so what have i decided to do well as all the options that were available to me i liked the idea of the motherboard mechanism where you had two seven segment leds um, connected to your project um, to, to display and remember so you write the values at EEPROM or something to say last error code um, and display that. Here we have a four digit LED, seven segment LED. Um, it's a little bit big to be quite honest. Well, quite a bit big, as you can see. Yes, and all right. It's got the clock single in the between, unlike this one that's got just a decimal point down the bottom, right? The two are available fairly cheaply, both here in the UK, quite locally and from China and they're probably I don't know three to four dollars maybe something like that which is pretty cheap considering that you communicate with these then via a library and what I'm doing for this one over here for example which is the temperature in this workshop right now I'm going for the first digit display this for the second digit display this third fourth so on and then the decimal point I just as part of the loop I'm going has it been 100 milliseconds or whatever I've chosen turn that decimal point on or off whatever it isn't now so it basically toggles the value to show me yes this is definitely still running it hasn't hung if you like yeah so it's definitely still running and that's me flashing that decimal point and it's very easy very easy indeed to use that device which is why I'm using it that way and they're very cheap as I've just mentioned but they are for me too big too big for what you ask too big for what yeah, yeah. um well, they're too big for putting into a project like this. If I wanted to put this into this project just for error recording, it would be ridiculous, wouldn't it? Absolutely ridiculous. You want something small and tiny. Ideally, no bigger than two digits this size. I mean, they, these are pretty small. So if you could get two digits like this, plus whatever controlling chip it needs, to say, I'll just stick that on the PCB for this particular project, and have it as a regular feature, I reckon that would work. So how easy is it going to be to do that? Let's have a look. So here we have a simple circuit diagram for the SN74XX595, um, which is basically a shift register. And you, you put a value in, and it puts it out to a seven-segment device, a bit, a bit like this here, right? That's for one, one chip to one seven-segment LED. I've decided I'm going to go the dual route, so I'm going to have two seven-segment LEDs, little tiny things they are, 0.3, as I just showed you, two chips on a PCB. Um, I'll probably take up uh, PCB Way's offer to me of making a four-layer PCB for this, just to make it really easy. I can put one on one layer, that on another layer to all connect through. We'll see how easy that is, though, going forward. Um, and then I can incorporate, if you like, this design either into separate PCB just for that freestanding PCB or put that whole thing into whatever PCB it is I'm designing and see if I could incorporate that almost as a, a standard thing, you know. So you design your PCB for your project and put this in because think how small that's going to be. Two chips and two LEDs and of course the chips are going underneath. So that go underneath that one, that go underneath that one. So the footprint is pretty small, literally and both metaphorically speaking. Yeah, so now, funnily enough, just arrived now is this. As you can see here, there's a piece of paper. This is the receipt from eBay. So on here, I've actually ordered 10 of those chips. Let me are, look. 74HC595D. There it is. And for 10 of them, it only came to £5.70. 
Was that included post? Yeah, it was. So 570 for 10 of them, um, which is, you know, not bad. The actual size of these is perhaps a bit bigger than I wanted, but, you know, we'll just have to see how we get on with those. Now, what I'm going to do, it just fell off there, actually. I've got one of these, which is a convertible, because these are surface mount, of course, if you're going to put them on the other side of the PCB. I'm going to stick one of those PCBs on here. I think that's the right one. SOP 16, is that right? Well, whatever. I've got a few more variants of this. So I'm going to solder one on a PCB, so I'll then put headers on it and plug it into a breadboard. And then I can plug my seven segment LED into the breadboard and just, just to prove it. I'll just do one LED, you know, one seven segment LED with the controller and see what code I need to push through from the Arduino. I'm, I'm convinced that other people have done this. Um, and just see how easy it's going to be. So that what I want in my project is for my project to say, right, just do whatever it is you're doing in the project. And every now and again, you call a function that you've written, a standard function to go, display error code 34 or 42 or whatever it is you want there yeah? and it just does it and you don't have to think about it that's the simplicity of this entire solution i think really you just chuck it over the wall and that's it uh, and the function could then write that value not just to eprom to say this is the last error that was recorded it will display it on those leds that's the idea all right so what I'm hoping to do then pretty soon, um, I've got the chips now, the LCDs, LEDs rather, are on the way, going to be delivered this week. Actually, I can't remember if I ordered them from China, in which case it won't be this week at all, will it? I can't remember where I ordered them from. The place has been in uproar. But redoing my workshop, which, yeah, I know. Um, when it's done, obviously you'll be the first to know how well it's gone, and uh, I'll share that with you. Yeah, so I've been through a number of permutations of all this. So what I'm saying to you guys is, if you know a way of capturing the last error and then somehow displaying that without having to connect up a serial monitor all the time, how do you do it? Yeah, How do you do it? Because the minute you touch the unit that's gone wrong, to say, tell me what the problem was, the problem will probably go away. If you reboot it, for example, maybe there's a function you could have inside it to say, give me all the serial stuff that you've output on the serial port from the underlying libraries, but I suspect that's, that's an awful lot of work. You could write it to a web page, potentially. Um, but once again, it's all being held in memory in here. So if you reboot this or restart it or something, you're going to lose that. I'll be interested to see how you, um, and I guess I'm not talking in this case to the noobs amongst us, um, the experienced programmers and developers and hobbyists who know that they do need to capture these errors so that we don't just keep getting errors and wondering what either what they are or that we've even had them. Yeah. Okay, um, I think I've done here. I've told you what I'm going to build then. I'm going to build this now with some little tiny LEDs, but I've got to design a PCB, and I'm not doing that until the LEDs arrive because the sizes might be different to what I think they are. But I think it's definitely the way I want to go so that I can plug things in dead easy and find out what went wrong. Except, of course, my stuff never goes wrong, does it? No. <laughs> really? Is that necessary? Come on. Okay, guys. Now, remember, um, PCB Way, have a look at their website. They've got some real good stuff going on. They're definitely a, a one-stop shop these days, you know, with assembly and CNC stuff and 3D printing and metal bending, and they're just doing everything. So help them celebrate their eighth year anniversary. I mean, can you imagine how they were when they first started off, what they are now? I mean, their growth must be almost vertical. Anyway, have a good look at them. I'm sure they'll appreciate it, and you might find something exactly what you want there as well. Not just PCBs either. Okay, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Comments down below, and remember, do the like and subscribe. Thanks very much. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose, and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.